Hey everybody, Red Mage here. Welcome back to this channel. In this video, I'm going to be doing something totally different than I usually do. I'm going to be doing a tier list. Uh, one of my viewers commented on a video recently and said I should do a top 10 list of my favorite adventures. And I think I'm going to do that for my one year anniversary, which is just coming up on September 9th. But I realized I don't know what my top 10 adventures are, certainly not the top 10 that I've reviewed. And so I went back and I found every adventure that I reviewed, plus some more, and I put them all into this, you know, random tier list generator thing, and I put a little image of each one, and I'm gonna rank them. That's gonna help me find my top 10, and then I'll do a, a sort of flip through and review of those top 10 for my, for my other video, but I have no idea how long this video is gonna be. It could be like an hour or more. <laughs> I don't know if anyone's interested in watching that, but, but I'm gonna do it anyway. I'm just gonna go through and talk about each one of these. Uh, as best as I can remember it and talk about things that I remember about it and things that I don't. The, the, the little thumbnails are very small. So I have no idea if I'll even remember what each one is. I might have to look it up and stuff. I don't know. I just thought this would be kind of fun. Um, so, you know, let's just see. Uh, so I've created some custom tier listings. We have a Dragon's Horde at the very top. Really good. I should say right now that all of these are going to be at least worth something, right? That's the idea. So they're all worth something. Any any treasure you pick up as an adventurer is worth something. And you know, you, as an adventurer, you never leave anything lying around, right? So top of the list is a dragon's hoard. That's like the best of the best. Below that, you find a legendary artifact, right? We're talking a named piece of equipment, something great. Below that, you have a plus three magic item. Just incredible. In Shadow Dark, that's the best kind of thing you can get. That's what I mostly play. Below that, you have a pile of golden gems. I mean, that's an awesome thing to find. Below that, you got a bag of silver, which is still pretty good. And then below that, you know, you have some loose copper pieces. Yeah, it's not the best. It's not the best stuff to find. But hey, it's still something, and you can put it in your purse. I don't know if there are going to be that many entries in that, honestly. Um, but I'm just going to go through. Anyway. Let's just start off, and these are kind of like sort of random. As you can see, there's an image for each of the ones I've reviewed. Um, and I'm just going to be going through and trying to do trying to do what I can. All right, so let's see. The first is Nightmare Over Ragged Hollow. Uh, you can kind of tell with this. Nightmare Over Ragged Hollow is a fantastic adventure. That's the one where you have that uh, golden light that's surrounding the church, and it's getting smaller and smaller every day weird stuff is happening inside the church. I don't know if it's a golden light, but it's like a bubble. Um, and then you're kind of like investigating the surrounding area and trying to find out what's going on. And then you go back um, to the church once it's open and you go into the dungeon crawl. So it's a great idea. It's a great idea. I think it's, it's awesome. The execution of the dungeon inside, I remember thinking was a little weird because you're not going to know that people are dying off until you get in there. And once you get in there, I'm not sure how easy it's going to be to get out. So the timer is more for the DM's sake, knowing who who dies and who doesn't. And therefore, it's a little less interesting, that whole side of it. The surrounding area is also really cool, but it doesn't really have a ton to do with the central problem happening in Ragged Hollow itself. It's sort of other stuff to do. But again, that's totally fine. In fact, I think there are a lot of people who would prefer that as sort of like a generic setting. So I'm going to start off with this in... It's hard to say whether it's a plus three magic item or it's a pile of golden gems. I am inclined to say it's a plus three magic item. I think so. But I think it's on the bottom of that list. But we'll see. I think it's right around there. Now, I should, I should note, um, most of these are adventures. A couple of these are more like setting-ish things, and a couple of them are like mega dungeons, or a few of them are mega dungeons. I know that's not a fair comparison, right? Like, I know that this is totally, totally, totally not fair. But that's okay. This is my tier list. I can do what I want. Um, and uh, I just wanted to include the stuff that I reviewed on my channel. I didn't review, I didn't include, like, all the adventure anthologies. I did include some adventures from anthologies, but not all of them. Anyway. Okay, the next one is Fallcrest Abbey. That's a fantastic adventure. I ran that. Um, one of the first Shadow Dark adventures I ran, I converted it over to Shadow Dark and ran it, and it was really, really fun. My players had a blast. A um, bunch of people died. The puzzles were fun. The, the role-playing was great. 
Uh, that's definitely a plus three magic item. Might even be a legendary artifact, but it's on the top end of plus three magic item. I think that's a great adventure. Okay, the next is the Waking Will We All. That's Dragon Sword. One of my favorite adventures of all time, if not my favorite adventure of all time. Uh, it's certainly up there. Oof, that's so, so, so good. Um, Waking Fuluby Hall I've run three times, and every time has been one of the most fun sessions I've ever run. I mean, it's just, it's a blast. Uh, it, and it's always different. Uh, it, it's a perfect play, it's a perfect little toolbox. Honestly, I think that might be my favorite adventure. At least it's, at least it's top three or four for me. Maybe even, yeah, I don't know, it's hard to say. But definitely a dragon sword. The Count, the Castle, and the Curse. That's a legendary artifact. I love the Count, the Castle, and the Curse. It's a great idea. It's a great execution. It's a, it makes really good use of the Shadow Dark timer. Um, the mechanics, it's really flavorful. It's really creepy. It's a great way of doing... I think it's a great way of doing Ravenloft. If you guys have never seen that one, you should check it out. I did a review of it. Um, well, I've done a review of all of these <laughs> at one point or another. But it's so good. Legendary, yeah, that's definitely a legendary artifact for sure. Okay, the next one, it's hard to see, but it's Raiding the Obsidian Keep. Um, I'm going to say this is a pile of golden gems. I like it. I definitely like it. But it's, it's, um, it just doesn't appeal to me as much as Nightmare of Ragged Hollow. It's much more linear than the Nightmare of Ragged Hollow, and I do prefer sort of more open-ended things. You're, you're, just, you're, you're going through a point crawl to get to the beach, then you're going through the beach point crawl to get to the dungeon, and then you're going through the dungeon to get to the end. So it's, you know, it's very step-by-step. -step. And there are choices and NPCs and fun stuff to run into, and... It's weird and bizarre. Don't, I like all that. But I think it's a pile of golden gems. Now, I think I'm just going to put everything in the proper category, and then I'm going to sort them after I do. So, be a little bit there. Pile of golden gems. Okay. Um, next here, the next we have is Willow. Willow's an interesting one. I really like Willow. Um, I think Willow is... Uh, I think it's in a plus three magic item. Willow was the one where you're coming to the town and everyone's kind of morose and sad. Except that one person who's really ineffective and <laughs> they're really happy. Everything's kind of going wrong. And then there are the rat folk and the bird folk. And there's a tower with an apprentice. And uh, yeah, that's on the upper end of plus three magic item. I'm, I'm going to put it over. I think I'm going to put it above, for now at least, I'm going to put it above um, Falkrest Abbey. Ooh, the next is, um, oh gosh, what's that called? It's by Jacob Fleming. Um, it's the third, it's the one that's most recent of his uh, settings and adventures. Ooh, I forget what that one's called, but I'm putting it into Legendary Artifact. It's, <laughs> it's kind of ironic, I don't remember what it's called, but I love that one. Um, oh gosh, it's where the orcs are attacking the city in the, in the, in the kind of hole that's like... Obenhold or something like that. That's the city of Obenhold. Um, dang it. I can't believe I don't remember that name. Oh well. It's a legendary artifact for sure. It's really good. Um, yeah, putting it up there. Alright, the next is the Alchemist's Lair or something like that. It's a Karen adventure. This is a really good one too. I think this is super flavorful. I'm going to put this uh, again, on the top of a plus your magic item. You're going to notice that, you know, probably most things are going to go right in the middle here. That's how it usually is. There's something on the top, some on the bottom, but the curve is usually biggest in the middle. Um, I'll have to rearrange that one because I don't remember. I don't, I don't know how it would relate to Willow, but it is a really good adventure. It's um, a Cairn adventure. It's set in the style of, like, um, the island of Dr. Moreau, and it's this alchemist who's done these all these weird experiments. It's really well laid out. I remember that. It was really well laid out. Okay, the next here is another one of the adventures that I've had a ton of fun with. Ton of fun. This is the Incandescent Grottoes. This is a Dragon Sword. Uh, maybe it's maybe it's low or it's high legendary artifact. Hmm. I'm gonna put it there for now. I might move it up into a Dragon Sword because I really like the Incandescent Grottoes. There's so much there. I ran it as a location in my West Marches. It was a place the players could go back to and back to, and they did. And they, they mined the heck out of it, in, literally and figuratively. They went there for the crystals, and they went there for the adventures, and they kept on finding new stuff to, to encounter, and they just loved it. It was really cool. So definitely including that. I had a lot of fun running it. They had a lot of fun playing it. The next one is Great Mountain Shaker. That's probably in a legendary artifact for the art alone. I've never actually run it. I haven't run a lot of these. 
Um, I'm gonna put it there in a legendary artifact. I think it's really good. The art is amazing. The point crawl nature of it is really amazing. The, uh, maybe I'm gonna drop it down. I don't like the timer. I don't like games that have really strict timers on players. Um, it stresses me out. <laughs> I think a lot of DMs are gonna actually like it for that reason. I think I'm, yeah, I think I'm gonna put it in a plus two magic item. It's good, but it's not, it's not like, yeah. Yeah, I think it's gotta go there. All right, the next is the Well of Frogs. This is a legendary artifact. The Well of Frogs is a fantastic uh, adventure for the uh, Echoes of Formaholt um, zine set um, by the guy who did Castles and Tillin, which is coming up, actually. I put Castles and Tillin on here because I had to. Uh, you guys probably know where that's going. But um, that's a good one. I think I'm going to move it. I know eventually I'm going to move it up um, high on the end of Legendary Artifact. That's a really good, really, really, really good adventure. So much stuff to play with in the Well of Frogs, and it goes really well in the city. Um, funny in-jokes, great treasure to find, a lot of flexibility in how you approach it and its use, able to build on it for further adventures. Yeah, lots of good role-playing, too. Awesome. Okay, uh, Castles and Tillin is a dragon sword. Maybe better than The Waking of Willoughby Hall. It's tough. It's tough to say. But it, it's it's definitely going up there. Okay, um, it's I mean I could go on and on about Castles and Tillin. I really could. <laughs> uh, Castles and Tillin is also something I've run a billion times. Um, I've never played it from beginning to end. Obviously, I haven't seen every room, but I've had tons of groups approach it, and every time they've gone in a different way, and every time it's been tons of fun, wild and wacky and fun. All right, um, The Sinister Secret of Peacock Point. That is the first adventure from the Wyvern Songs Anthology. I've run it, most of it, once. I, I'm going to put it under a pile of golden gems. I think it's a good adventure, and there's a lot to it, but maybe it was the particular group I had. Maybe it just it didn't vibe. Um, yeah, it just it didn't click. It didn't click. I thought I was... I kind of had higher expectations for it. I was a little, I was a little sad, I have to admit, uh, the way that it went. It wasn't, yeah, it wasn't as uh, as engaging as I thought it might be. So, maybe, again, might have been my group, might, probably was a lot of the way I ran it. But I had higher expectations just for the creepiness of it and for the funniness of it, and it just didn't come together in the right way. So, it's a good adventure, don't get me wrong, and I think probably with the right group and the right tone and all that, it would go really, really well. Uh, the Horrendous Hounds of Hendenburg. That's a great one. That's a really good one. I think I'm going to put that above Nightmare Ragged Hollow. Probably, a, It's probably going to go above Willow, ultimately. Somewhere around here. Yeah, it's a plus three magic item. It's probably just around Holy Mountain Shaker. Maybe before or after Charsay. Winter's Daughter? That's a legendary artifact. I used to think of this one as like my favorite adventure ever. I really like it. But I don't think it's Dragon Sword. I don't think it's as good as Zintillin or... Waking the Willoughby Hall. It's not in that category. At least I don't think so. All right, the next is Sailors on the Starless Sea. This is a DCC adventure. It's a funnel. I've run it twice. Um, have I run it twice? I've ran, I, I ran it... Yeah, basically I ran it twice. The first time... I, I, no, maybe just once. Mm, I don't remember. I've run a couple DCC funnels. A few DCC, like three or four. And uh, some of them blend together a little bit. I've run it once and everybody died. It was a total... It was a TPK for like 20 level zero characters. <laughs> um, I'm going to say this is a bag of silver. No. Pile of golden gems. It's a fun gauntlet. It's a fun gauntlet. I, I just find it to be... I don't know. I think some people are going to get really mad if I put it there. <laughs> um... Am I just saying that because I've put too much stuff on the hopper end? Maybe I'm just doing that. I'm going to put it as a pile of golden gems. I'll rearrange it. Maybe I'll put it higher than... I think it's higher than the Sinister Secret to be confident. Yeah. Yeah, I think I'm just being too harsh. I think I'm going to put it there. Pile of golden gems. I like it a lot. There's a lot to like about it. It's very flexible in its approach. Um, the upper part of the castle, I think, is much more interesting than once you get down below. Um, it's a very linear... As strange as that sounds, like there is a flexibility to the approach, 
initially. And then you get into the dungeon and it's pretty much room after room. And you're kind of expect, like, like when you get to the island at the end, it seems like you kind of just have to sneak. You're not going to be able to take them in a, in a straight up fight. And that's kind of how like each segment is. Like there's something to do in order to pass by without getting wiped. At least again, this was my experience. I'm, I probably was I was I was much more inexperienced as a GM back then. This was years and years ago. So it might be interesting to try it again and see how it would go. But I'll leave it there for now, guys. You, you see, this, this is going to be a long video. I have tons of these to go. <laughs> I've only gone through a handful. All right, uh, very merry Shadowween. This is one I just reviewed. This is a legendary artifact. I'm going to put it up here. I'm going to play this so much. It appeals to me on so many levels. Um, I'm going to move it around, but I, it's going in the Legendary Artifact for sure. A Very Merry Shadowween, it, it's a uh, Shadow Dark adventure that just came out for the Spooky Tales or the Weird Tales game jam by Baron de Rapp. Fantastic, fantastic adventure. You know, I didn't include the other two. I realized that just now. <laughs> I didn't include the other two adventures on this tier list. I probably should have. Oh well, say la vie, right? It's not the end of the world. Um, I can even say where they might go when I get to the end, but but a very merry Shadowween. I, I had to include it because it was just that good. Um, you guys should check out that review. I go into detail. Now, the Chamberlain's Chessboard, which is a Karen adventure. I think it's the first Karen adventure I reviewed on the channel. Uh, it's a really good one. It's so flavorful. It's got a lot of stuff. It's definitely a plus three magic item. I think it goes it goes somewhere in here. I'll move it around, but I think it goes in the Bluster Magic Guide. It's real good. Really, really good. Um, there are chess pieces wandering around, and the, the pawns have revolted and are setting up a communist, like, a commune. <laughs> and they ha they use uh, playing cards to distinguish one, one another. And then there's, like, bandits running around the forest, and there's a black knight, uh, like the black, not, like, the pawn, the chess piece, the black knight, who's, uh, challenging people for the sake of his queen and it's just right up my alley whimsical fun there's a lot of cool stuff and there are great magic items you can find little chess pieces that uh are basically like one use magic items that you can recharge them i think but they're really powerful magic items and they're really fun flavorful that's a great one chamberlain's chessboard you guys check that out it's an early review i did all right the next one is the secret of the black crag i always forget that name but i think that's right this time secret of the black crag it's more of like a series of adventures. It's an archipelago, a bunch of, bunch of different locations and adventures to find in those places. So it's not really fair to put it here. Um, but it's good. It's a legendary artifact. Uh, maybe, uh, maybe it's a plus three magic item. I'm going to put it there. Oh, my, I probably will move that up to a legendary artifact, I think. But I'm going to put it there for now. I really like it. It's a super, super, super good adventure. There's so many cool uh, like sub-adventures in it, and it's got that Indiana Jones, Uncharted, Atlantis, The Lost Empire vibe, all kind of combined, you know, Secret of Monkey Island, uh, Pirates of the Caribbean. When I run a pirate campaign, eventually I will, that'll be the basis of it. I'll use the Secret of the Black Crag and those islands as the main islands, and then I'll add in other stuff from other supplements and settings. All right, the next one that I have on here is an image from the, I think it's the first adventure anthology from OSE. But it's particularly the Comet that Time Forgot. I really like that one. Um, I haven't run it, but I think it's a good, it's a good plus three magic item. It's got to be. Um, it's so pulpy. And again, I haven't run it, but you've got fire and ice on the two sides of the comet. Um, you've got dinosaurs, pterodactyls. You've got, um, you know, just like fire giants and ice giant and, and ice people and I don't know I think it's cool it reminds me of like you know like that that old cartoon from the 70s I think fire nice yeah I think that's it's, it's essentially going for that vibe in fact I think the the although in this case I think the princess of ice has been kid captured by the fire giants as opposed to um, yeah I think it's the uh, the opposite in that cartoon like the princess of fire has been captured by the ice king or something like that maybe it's like that. honestly I don't know <laughs> All right, the next one is um, a couple of the, uh, yeah, these are the downsized dungeons. The, this one is the one with the hamsters. I, I'm going to put it in the loose, some loose copper pieces. Um, it just doesn't appeal to me. Giant space hamsters doesn't appeal to me very much. Yeah. I'm sure that some people are going to like it a lot and then find it really funny. 
but uh, you know it's a free it's a again it's it's free it's it's at least some loose copper pieces right like you know i i i don't want it to be insulting i really don't i i don't mean it that way it was just kind of a joke tongue in cheek it's a, it's solid it had it's it has value absolutely it's just not something i would really really go for i pick it up if it's there you know and it is it's a pay what you want free pdf with ideas and and some of them are really funny and people are going to get a kick out of it so it has it has good value go pick it up it's just not really my my favorite thing. Uh, the next one is the John Carter of Mars, uh, sort of. I think that's the fourth or the third. Uh, no, it's got to be the it's got to be the fourth. Yeah, because the Giant Space Hamsters is fifth. John Carter of Mars is I think was fourth. That's a bag of silver. I really like John Carter of Mars. Um, I've never really run anything in Barsoom or in that idea, but I think it would be really cool to to run something like that. And uh, I like the references. It doesn't seem like it's really super flavorful in John Carter. It didn't. It's almost incidental that it is set there, but I like the idea. I definitely put it in a bag of silver. It's, it's good. Um, whoa, what even is that, man? I have no idea what this is an image of. I have no idea what that is. Hmm. Let's see, I have the files over here. Maybe I can find it and get a better better glimpse of it. Oops. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. That's the Bone Blackguards. That's the first of the adventures from the second OSC anthology. Um, that's a pile of gold and gems. It's got a couple cool ideas. A couple, Well, a couple of really good ideas, I think. Um, it could be on the bag of silver side. Maybe it's a bag of silver. No, I think it's I think it's a pile of golden gems. It's a good. It's it's definitely good. Um, it's a solid B, I would say, if I'm giving grades. Although that means these are like A A plus plus and then like S tier <laughs> above it. I don't know. It's a good. It's a good one. It's a really good adventure. It's got uh, some really funny ideas. I think if I ran it, I might even put it higher, because again, I haven't run most of these. But, uh, but it's good. Yeah. That's how I'm going to put it. For now. We'll move it around at the end. Alright, the next one is the Sunbathers, which is, I think, in the same category, but higher. Because it's really flavorful. And, um, I really, it's, I, I dig the kind of creepy that it is. Um, there's a creepy flesh cult thing that's trying to make this weird one whole smooth, you know, flawless flesh thing, and they're using the bodies of, of adherents who come here. Um, and it's also got a bit of an island that has a lot of locations that aren't developed, and I, I kind of like that sort of thing where you have, like, hints of other stuff that you could do, other places to go and, and explore around a dungeon. So, yeah, it's definitely a pile of golden gems. There's a lot of good ideas there. Uh, the next one is the third... Of the, uh, I think it's the third of the downsized dungeons. That's a bag of silver too. That's the 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 um, uh, the uh, lizard folk temple. Yeah, lizard folk temple. It's good. It's got a, a solid lizard folk, you know, vibe. <laughs> got a temple. Got some lizard folk trying to sacrifice people. Got some cult activity going on, worshiping their their evil dark gods. All that. All right, the next is the Black Worm of Brandensford. Um, you know, I think a lot of people are going to get mad at me for this, but I'm going to put it at the top of a pile of golden gems. I think some people swear by it. Um, I think it's good. It's on the generic side of fairy tale for me. Now, that's fine. I think a lot of people are going to like that. But it's on the. I think it's on the generic side of fairy tale. It's good. It's definitely good. And there's a lot of really funny ideas there. I love the idea with the dwarf turning into a dragon. Because he's he was so greedy and killed his brothers and all that. That's a great that's a great idea. Yeah. It definitely deserves to go in, in a pile of golden gems, I think. Because it's it got real good, you know, solid value. You can turn you can sell that sell those gems for a lot of money. Uh, the next is the first of the downsized dungeons. That's the best of them, I think. I'm going to put that at the top of the tier of the bag of silver. I think they're all silver, except for that one, I think, is copper. Um, loose copper pieces. I think the, the, the others are all solid. Solid silver. 
Um, yeah, that's good. That's really good. It's got that Hydra, which I think is really cool for a low-level adventure. It's going to kill a lot of players. You put it in the dungeon, you put you put this dungeon nearby. Maybe this would be a great location for a West Marches, because it's got a really... It's small, so it's, it's easily self-contained. You put it in a little area nearby. It's got a very hard creature that the players would have to defeat, or learn to defeat, or find a way around. So it's perfect for like a low-level area with a danger spike. You tell people that it's dangerous, you warn the players that it's dangerous. Maybe they go in and discover the Hydra and retreat. And then it's a place they can come back to or find a way past. Yeah. I put that atop the back, so good one. Alright, the next is the House Under the Moon Dial. That one is great. Creepy, but great. I'm going to say it's a plus three magic item. I, yeah, it's a plus three magic item. It's somewhere around here. It's got a lot of good ideas. It's not a legendary artifact, though. It's up there. It's up there. It's plus three. It's, it's got to be a plus three magic item. I, I really like it. I want to run it. That's one of the ones I want to run. It's not like a must run for me, but it's enough of a one that I would, yeah, I would like to. Okay, the next of these is another one of these. Uh, it's the second. Yeah, it's the second of the uh, of those uh, downsized dungeons. It's it's. I think it's above. No, it's it's below. It's because it's very generic. I remember thinking at the time that there's nothing connecting its backstory with the mine itself. It's essentially just a map, within a separate bit of fiction, kind of vaguely about the map, and there's nothing in the mechanics to connect to the map and to back up that sort of fiction that it's this cursed de undead mine. I think it could have been done more effectively than it was in that sense. So, But it's still valuable. It's still a bag of silver, right? You pick it up for sure. You go for it. All right, the next is... Um, it's the St. Patrick's Day one. <laughs> the leprechaun house where there's an evil leprechaun cursing the, the village and you have to stop him. That's a pile of golden gems, I think. Uh, maybe on the lower end. It's probably around here somewhere. It's a good adventure. I think it's really funny. And um, I think it'd be fun for a holiday, especially if you know you have a bunch of people around, they're drinking uh, the St. Patrick's Day adventure. It'd be a great in-theme adventure like that. It doesn't have the same sort of punch and excellence that I think a lot of other adventures, like themed adventures, have. But it is really, really, I would say it's proficient and funny. And it's very thematically consistent. So, yeah, it's definitely got that pile of golden gems value right there. All right, the next is the Sword of the Dragon Slayer. Sword of the Dragon Tyrant. I forget what it's called. But that's a really cool one, too. This one's got uh, a nice, interesting setting. And it's got this cool idea that there's a dragon you gotta you got to plan for and prepare for the dragon attack. Sort of a subversion of expectations. And there's reasons to go and explore... The backstory in the library in town. I remember that. I liked that. So I'm going to say this is a, a upper end of pile of golden gems. I think. I think we're looking at upper end because it's definitely got that value. Uh, the next one's Castle Corpin Halla. That's just that one-page adventure. It's given in three different forms. Um, it's not the Count in the Castle and the Curse level of awesome, but I like it a lot. I think if you're going to run Ravenloft. And you're not going to run the Count the Castle and the Curse. I think you should run something like Castle Corp and Hollow. So I'm going to put this at the bottom. I'm going to put this in a pile of golden gems, but I'm going to put it around here. Yeah, I think that's pro probably actually exactly right where, right where it goes. Yeah, something like that. That's a good one, though. I like that adventure. All right, the next one is... Gosh, what's that? Oh, Shadow of Tower Silver Axe. That's a good one. That's also Jacob Fleming. Um, it's like the definition, I think I had said this when I reviewed it, it's like the definition of vanilla D&D in the nicest way possible. Like, that's like the, the, the most positive, in the most positive way. I don't mean that's the nicest thing I can say about it. I mean, I say that and take it in the nicest possible way those words could be taken. <laughs> vanilla D&D, it's like when you, when you talk about Dungeons and Dragons, classic old school, starting in a town, going into the wilderness, finding dungeons, killing monsters, getting treasure, coming back to town. That's in the Shadow of Tower Silver Axe. And that formula is great. So I'm going to put that as a pile of golden gems. That's good. 
that's solid. Really, really cool. Now here's one I haven't reviewed on the channel, Aberrant Reflections. Um, I don't even know if I want to put it on the tier list. I will. I'll put it on there. I think it's really cool. Um, I should do a review of it at some point. Questing Beast has done a great review of it, and I think it's really good. I'm going to put it somewhere up here in Plus Your Magic Item, because I think it's really good. Some people, again, it's one of those things where if I run it, and if it, if it went well, I probably would put it up higher, because I would just have such so many good associations with it. Because it feels like it has tons of opportunity for hilarious and memorable moments at the table. So it, it could be higher. So I'll put an, I would put an asterisk next to it there. Uh, the next is the Evils of Ilmire. That's a good one. That's a good one. I like the Evils of Ilmire. Um, it's a great hex crawl. There's tons of stuff. You get tons of stuff with it. It's kind of crazy how packed that one is. The Evils of Ilmire. Mm. This is a tough one. This is a really tough one. I think I'm going to put it in upper end of pile of golden gems. And again, I'll move things around. It might be under Tower Shadow, Shadow Tower Silver Axe because of the tone. The tone is really gruesome. That doesn't. Tend, I don't tend to like that as much. There's a lot of body horror and stuff. Some people really like that. That's not my. That's not my vibe. <laughs> but the, the the sheer amount of stuff you get, the, the sheer amount of great ideas you get in Ilmire, might it might be a plus three magic item. Hmm. That's tough. That's tough. All right. Well, we'll see. Okay, the next is in the Shadow of the Manticore, or the Shadow of the Manticore. I think it's just called the Shadow of the Manticore. It's another Jacob Fleming setting adventure. Um, it's, I think it's in between the Northern March, or whatever that one's called. I, 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 the one I put here, the Orcs. It's in between that, and it's in between the Shadow Tower of I think it's a plus three magic item. Because you get the added interest. It's not just vanilla. You get the added interest of the Manticore as a villain. I'm going to put it at the bottom of plus three magic item. That's what I'm going to put for now. Bottom of plus three magic item. I think it's a good one. But it's lower than Nightmare of a Red Cobb. Yeah. Uh, the next is the, the Secret Vault of the Windswept Isle. This is a pretty new one as well. This is a really good one. Really good adventure. Um, it's somewhere in here. It's somewhere in the middle of a pile of golden gems, I think. Again, I'd, I'd like to run it to see. It's a little linear. I think that's my only reason I don't put it higher. It's good. Don't get me wrong. It's a good adventure. It's got great map. Like the, the cartography was really good. I remember everything's drawn on the map, so you can see it. Um, it's 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 got a lot of good writing going for it. It's evocative. Very very it draws you in. The art is really good. Yeah. I think that's I think that's fair. It it's right around the other. I think I put it up there. Maybe even. No, I think that's probably the right place for it. I'll have to rearrange. I'll have to rearrange later, because it, it's tricky. A lot of this stuff will have to get shipped around. All right, the next is Dwarves Behaving Badly. Oh, this is a pile of silver. Or a bag of silver. This is a bag of silver. It's good. It's solid. It's a, a Dwarves Behaving Badly. It's got a couple really cool ideas. It's got, um, it's got some funny things going on. I like the fact that the final boss happens at the bottom of the... at the, at the top of the... Like, at the end of the first floor. And then you've got a second floor if you want to. Like, you can just seal it off. You don't have to run that. And some people are going to probably never see the bottom. Yeah, I think that's probably where it goes. It's, it's, it's value. That's what you're looking for. It's value. It's definitely something you add in to a bigger campaign. I don't know if I would build a whole thing around it or run it on its own, given its competition. I think there are, there are simply a lot of better adventures out there. But if you're going to use it as part of a, yeah, part of an ongoing story, take inspiration from it, or add it in as like a location on a hex crawl or as part of a West Marches, I think that's it. Maybe that's one way of looking at a lot of these adventures. I think anything in a pile of golden gems and up, I would find reason to run on their on their own. Things below that in a, in a bag of golden, a bag of silver and some loose copper pieces, I think I would use them in the right contexts mostly as part of a bigger campaign, West Marches, something like that. But everything else I think I would be willing to run on its own as a one-shot. Yeah, that's. I think that's a good way of thinking about it. All right, the next one is the Jeweler's Sanctum. It's another one of those adventure anthologies, adventures, I forget if it's in the first or second. Um, I have run it. 
I ran it as part of my West Marches, I included it. Um, I think I'm gonna put it in a bag of silver. It's good. It had a couple really interesting parts, but it also, it just didn't have an oomph moment. Um, there were a couple things. The, the, the trick at the beginning, the checker, like, floor trap, I thought was gonna be kinda cool. And my players were gonna get it, but they, they figured it out. I mean, like, I mean, they didn't even, they didn't even skip a beat. They were just like, oh yeah, that's what it is. Um, they're smarter than I am, so. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a good one. I'll put it there. Top of bag of silver. Uh, next one is the, what is this one called? It's like the Septum, Sanctum of Seven or something like that. Um, Sepulchre of the Seven or something like that. It's, it's, uh, it's a really weird one. It's kind of cool. Hmm, I don't know. It's, I think it's in a bag of silver for me. I think, again, I think some people are going to get really mad if you have experience with it and you're like, no, dude, that was an awesome adventure. I, I've totally run it on its own. Maybe it's in the bottom of a pile of golden gems. It's got some really interesting elements to it. There's a subversion of expectation that kind of annoys me. We, I think everyone feels like we have to do that now. Heroes aren't really heroes. They're actually villains. They all went crazy and we have to... I don't know. That bothers me. Hmm. I think it's probably above. It's probably somewhere in here. It might be lower. It might be, it might be higher, sorry. It might be a pile of golden gems, but I'll leave it there for now. We'll move it around. Uh, the next is Advanced Ancient Academy, I think is what it's called, or Secret Ancient Academy. Forgotten Ancient Academy. I, I kick-started it a while back. It's a very straightforward. I, I think it's probably I think it's probably some some loose copper pieces, only because my expectations for it were a lot higher. That's that's being too harsh. No, is it being too harsh? I don't know. I haven't reviewed it on the channel, and I think that the reason for that, I just wasn't interested in it. I, I kickstarted it, I was really looking forward to it, and then it came and it was really, really like kind of by the numbers. Very standard. Which again like that's what I put. That's what I said about um, in, the, in the Shadow of Tower Silver Axe. But it's on like the, the lower end. Yeah, it's on the lower end of of vanilla. No, oh, there were some good. I'm gonna put it up here, bag of silver, because I think I think there are some tables that just want that. Yeah, there are some tables that just want that. They just want that standard, um, you know, kobolds in one room, ghosts in the next, skeletons in the next, um, without a really strong theme. I mean, there's kind of a theme there, but I don't know. I think I'm going to put it in a bag of silver there. I don't remember it as well as perhaps I I could, and, and that maybe that's part of it. Um, okay. Uh, let's see what's next. The next is, I think it's The Lost Treasure of Granny Snake Eyes, which is a really short adventure for Old School Essentials, maybe? I don't remember. I haven't reviewed it on the channel. I included it here. I'm going to put this in loose copper pieces because it's really specific. I remember that. It was really specific, and it's it's like kind of tongue-in-cheek. It's this old granny who's like, I'm a thief, and you should find my treasure, and she bursts through the window. It's, it's kind of funny. It's not my vibe. It, that's exactly what I would put. Um, yeah, it's exactly right. the reason I put the uh, hamster one there. Like, it's funny, and it's going to appeal to some people, but it's not terribly interesting, and it, it's it's tonally specific enough that I don't have a use for it, and it's not my kind of humor, so I'm not likely to run it. Yeah. I think that's how I put it. I think that's how I put it. So it's, you know, it has value for sure, and there are some people who are going to definitely, like, snatch it up and be like, ooh, that's a fun... That's a funny adventure, I'm gonna use that. And it's really short, I remember that, it was really short. Just like four or five rooms and just a handful of encounters, so you could run it pretty easily. But I think I'm gonna put it there. Uh, the next is, I think it's the Metery Mishap. Is that right, is that what this one is? The Metery Mishap. Um, I think that's that one, is that right? I have my other image here. Yes, that's the Metery Mishap. That one's interesting. There were a couple things that I really liked about that. 
I'm, I'm going to put this in a bag of silver, because I think it, I remember thinking it, it's good. Yeah, it's probably right in there. It's good. Uh, yeah, I think that's right. I think that's almost the right exact place for it. I'll, again, I'll move it around a bit more, but I think it's in the middle somewhere of a bag of silver. Valuable, interesting. I think in terms of the competition, it gets, it gets outpaced. Like, if it, it, it would, you'd have fun with it on its own. But I just don't think it's, I just don't think it's, going to be super like draw you especially again when you have this sort of competition out there i think if it were a pay what you want adventure or a free adventure i might put it higher but i i think i remember you have to pay some money for it um and again as soon as you start charging for your adventures you're putting yourself up against some pretty stiff competition in, in the pay what you want category right like or if you're in the free category um I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm like, yeah, do whatever you want, man. <laughs> you know, as soon as you start re like charging for your adventures, you're saying, hey, I'm pick mine over other things, um, which you're not saying when you put yourself in the free or pay what you want category, right? You're saying, hey, here's something you can have, check it out. But if you're, if you're, if you're charging money for it, you're saying pick mine instead of something else, and that is a competition. And there are some really good adventures that you can pay a little bit of money for, and there's a lot of really good free adventures out there. So. Yeah, I think that's... I gotta put it there. I think I gotta put it there. I, I might put it lower simply because all this other stuff is free. No, that's not true. These aren't free. This isn't free. I'm gonna drop it down here. And again, I'll rearrange later, but I think that's... That's my reasoning. Don't know if it's good, but that's my reasoning. Alright, uh, Gods the Forbidden more North, that's Dragon Sword. Oops. That is a Dragon Sword. I'm putting that up top. Um, I don't think it's... Well, it's up there. <laughs> Castles and Tillin, uh yeah, it's up there. Now it's also not really fair because it's a campaign setting. It's not just an adventure, but I love it. I think it's it's a dragon sword. It's 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 a must buy. If you're at all interested in old school D and D, like that old school vibe. And, and what I like about this man is that, and again, this is my personal preference. I know not everyone likes this, but good is good as and bad is bad in this, like. I, I'm 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 just tired. Like there's there's a real movement I think in the uh, RPG sphere, <laughs> and and I, I think I understand where it comes from. But there's a real like no no. Chaos is good. Like the you know the the, the underdog is good, and I, I can see why a lot of people who are drawn to this sort of hobby might be in that mindset, and might have that kind of that worldview. It's not a worldview I really have really. Um, and obviously, the underdog is off at the good guy. <laughs> Don't get me wrong; I understand that. Uh, that's not what I mean. Um, but the idea that that everything everything in shades of gray, and that very often the people who think they're good are the ones who are bad. I recognize that that's often true. But sometimes you gotta have knights in shining armor, right? Sometimes you gotta have villains with twirly mustaches. <laughs> not that this is exactly in that category. But the bad guy is really bad. And yet, I think. Now, obviously, the first volume is out. Volume 2 and Volume 3 aren't out. I think there might be something about redemption in there for him, which is really interesting, too. I don't know if that's true. But there were a couple of hints about that. I'd like to see how, if that's the direction that it goes, how that would be pulled off. Because I think that would be hard to pull off, given how evil the guy is in everything we know about it. But I like the world. I think it's very, very fun. Um... And I think that the adventures in Gods of the Forbidden North are a lot of fun. So, Dragon Sword. That's where I'm putting it. All right, the next is Tangled, which is a gauntlet, or a level zero adventure. Um, I think it's for DCC. Tangled is good. It's really good. I like the, the vibe and the, the, the aesthetic. It's like video gaming. Uh, I think it's a pile of golden gems. I think it's probably somewhere around here. Yeah. I think I'm going to put it there for now. I haven't run it. I would like to run it again. I'd like to run a lot of these. But I'd like to run it as a funnel. I like funnels a lot. I like level zero adventures a lot. Gauntlets a lot. Um, and I think it's a good one. I think it has a lot of interesting choices. And role playing. Which is not that common in a funnel. And I think it pulls it off pretty well. There's another funnel coming up, which is really good. I'm going to put that in the plus three magic items or legendary artifact, I think. <laughs> but for now, we'll hold off on that. Okay, the Isle of the Plangent Mage. Mm, also one I haven't reviewed on my channel. I think it's a bag of silver. 
Again, it has that body horror element, which is I'm not keen on. Can I put it there? Yeah. I think that's actually exactly where it goes. But there's a lot of cool elements to it. And I really like the puzzle that you're kind of building the, or you're getting the things to play on the different floors of the dungeon. That's a cool one. That's cool. The Hole in the Oak. This is a good one too. I, I have not played it. Um, I think it's probably higher than I'm going to put it. <laughs> um, but I think I'm going to put it in here. A pile of Golden Gems. I think it's probably better than that. But that's where I'm putting it for now. Because I think... I compare it in my mind to the Incandescent Grottoes. I mean, they're, they're kind of linked. And they have a very similar vibe. Um, but Incandescent Grottoes has a dragon. <laughs> and... I have had a ton of fun with it, and I have been trying to find ways of playing the Hole in the Oak, and I've just never found, like, I've never found the group that the vibe fits as well, or as easily. I don't know, it's, it's more earthy. It's more, I don't know. I've taken things from it and used them in adventures. The faces in the roots, I've used that. Um, but overall, I think... Probably it's the sort of thing where if I ran it, I would put it higher, once again. You know, there are some adventures you think, I'm giving it the benefit of the doubt, if I ran it, I might put it lower. This is one where I think I'm being overly neutral about it, overly meh about it. And I think if I actually ran it, it would be better. But I'm going to put it there. Yeah. I don't know if that makes any sense. <laughs> but that's where I'm putting it. All right, the next is uh, Frostmire and the Whispering Rats or something like that. Catacomb of Whispering Rats. That's really good. I think this is one of the better low-level adventures you can run. One of the better low-level adventures you can run for Shadow Dark right now. And I, I don't remember if you have to pay money for it. It might be pay what you want. It might be like 99 cents or a dollar or something like that. But I like it a lot. It's in the upper end of a pile of golden gems. I think it's up here. Yeah, I think it's up here. That's a good one. Okay, um, Blood Castle or something like that. Castle of the Blood Prince or Blood Blood Castle. <laughs> I forget what it is. Uh, I haven't reviewed it on my channel. Questing Beast has. You can watch the review over on, over on his channel. Um, I don't know this one all that well. There are a couple magic items I think are awesome. And it reminds me of Castlevania. For that reason, I think I'm going to put it... Yeah, but it's also not terribly appealing to me. I'm going to put it up here. Top of a bag of silver somewhere. And again, I think people are going to get mad at me for that. <laughs> or, if, you know, if anyone watches this far into the video. I have no idea. This video might have, like, two views. Um, because it's going to be super long. I, I'm getting halfway, maybe. And I'm about 48 minutes in. Yeah, it's going to be an hour and a half video, I think. I don't mind. I'm just staying up. <laughs> uh, so I don't mind it so much. But I, I... And hey, you know, who minds? No one watches it. No one watches it. Just me putting a video out there. And this will help me get, again, this will help me get my thoughts together on what my top ten are. So. All right, the next is the Isle of Mists, I think is what it's called. It's something I backed from Kickstarter. I was really disappointed in this one, I have to say. I think it could have been a lot better than it was. Um, the art, the art really took me out of it. It's it, Some of it was so kitty and, like, chibi. And that's just not my vibe. And it was totally inconsistent. Some some of the art was good and like really really good. And some and then it just you turn the page and you're like whoa that just takes me right out. And then I don't know it just it wasn't what I was expecting. I'm gonna put this in some loose copper pieces. Again like a lot of people are gonna love it. It might be right up. But that's what I think about all of these things, right? I mean I'm putting them in the lower range, but that's that's my preference. Some people are gonna take these and say you know this is great. We had a ton of fun with it. I really liked the races that it gave us. I really liked the the art was was fun and engaging to me, you know. So you know, I think a lot of people are gonna like that. The next is the Swamp Cult Dragon. This is by I forget. Um Yeah, this is the one that I thought was really linear. It felt like a World of Warcraft quest line. Yeah, this is some copper pieces for me. I'm being kinda harsh with these ones. Um I think it's, I think it's here. 
yeah, it's probably there. Probably there. I really didn't like it, honestly. Now, like when I when I reviewed it, I remember I, I, even as I was reviewing it, I was like, I think I'm being nicer than I really feel towards this. Because I was I, I was more disappointed with it than I was interested in it. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's some loose copper pieces. I think you can have fun with it. But I, it's just, again, in terms of competition with other adventures out there, there's just... I don't know why you'd use it. And I'm not really sure why you would include it in a West Marches 2. Because, again, there, it's so linear. You're going to have to run it from beginning to end as a quest. And it's, it's almost scripted. Yeah, no, that's some loose copper pieces. Actually... I'm talking myself out of it. I think this is like my least favorite thing that I have reviewed. Ah, no. Yeah, it's 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 got it. It's somewhere down there. Yeah, all right. Surge Rock Vault, that's next. Surge Rock Vault, that's an interesting adventure. Um I like the idea. It's probably a bag of silver. It's probably up here somewhere. Surge Rock Vault. I've never actually reviewed it on the channel. Um it's like a level seven adventure, which is cool. But it's not my favorite. Yeah. I'm going to put it there. Again, it, it's probably got a lot of value. But it seems like something I would add into a bigger campaign. There's a floating rock. In fact, if I run a pirate campaign, maybe I'd put Surge Rock Vault is one of these, one of the locations you can find. Yeah. And it's dangerous. And, you know, if you're playing a pirate campaign or something like that, maybe it's something the player shouldn't, shouldn't go for for a while. But maybe it's out there. Yeah, that's probably good. Put it there. All right, um, uh, the Concealed Abbey of the Dragonfly God. Yeah, that's one of Kelsey's uh, official adventures for Shadow Dark. Uh, I think it's a bag of silver, too. I like it. I'm going to put it there. I'm not going to do the other official adventures for Shadow Dark because there's, I don't know, there were six of them I could have. I could have put them in. I could have. <laughs> I could have easily done it, actually. I just didn't put them in. Um, I'm going to put that one there, and I think I'll put the rest of them basically all on that. Again, they're the sorts of things, they're good, they're solid, they seem cool. I don't know if I would run them, given the choice of them or other adventures, and the limited time that I have to play, I don't think I would ever say, hey guys, let's play a one-shot, and I would run one. Maybe I would. Maybe I, I don't think I would, though. I think I would play other things. Um, but as like a location in a setting, they're great. That's why I'm going to put them in the bag of silver. Valuable as additional content somewhere. All right, Cry of the Sting Bat. This is great. This is a pile of golden gems, maybe even a plus three magic item. I like this one a lot. Um, this is going upper end up here. Cry of the Sting Bat. That's Rune Hammer. Um, it's a gauntlet or a funnel, I think. But you're dropped into the bottom of a pit, and you got to get out. And the timer is made, you know, it's it's one of those things where I don't tend to use the timer in Shadow Dark, the live timer. But it it's one of the better uses of the live timer that I've actually seen where you just have that much time and at the end of it you're dying because all those sting bats are coming back and they're going to eat you. you got to get out of the place before then. It's very linear. Yeah, it's very linear. I'll move it down a little bit. But I like it a lot. I think it's good. I'll, I'll rearrange again. <laughs> It'll take an extra 30 minutes at the end to rearrange, but I'll do it. The next one is the Crow's Cage, which is also by Runehammer. It's also for Shadow Dark. This is a good one. Um, I'm less inclined to run it but it does have enough interest that I might run it. I, I think I'm going to put it down here. Yeah, it's like Bone Blaggards or Peacock Point. Interesting. I'd probably run it at some point. But it's not my favorite thing ever. Yeah. Um, the something Sepulchre or the, the Whispering Catacombs. The I forget what this one's called. This is the one where the goblins have kidnapped uh, the groom and your village has to go rescue him and you, you sneak in the back door and all the goblins are in the front of the cave and you have to sneak in through the back and you can choose the two paths. This is a plus three magic item. This is a really good one. I like this one a lot. Yeah. That's a great adventure. Man, I forgot about that one. I like it. I really like that one. Okay. Man, I'm, I'm, glad, I looked, I'm glad I remembered that one or had that one. All right, uh, let's see. Cause of Morph. Kazad Moor, that's an interesting one. There's a lot to like about it. It's a pile of golden gems, I think. It's probably up here. Yeah. Kazad Moor, that art punk 
vibe is, is off-putting to some people, and I remember the colors were really off-putting to me, but it comes with a print-friendly version. You can just use that. And suddenly all that really off-putting color doesn't off, isn't off-putting anymore, because it's just black and white. And Cosmo Boring, the ideas there are great, especially the zombie horde towards the end. I remember that. That was really cool. There's just a horde of zombies you can't possibly kill all of. So, you gotta survive. You gotta find a way to survive. I like that. Okay, the Tomb of Ostrovaris. One of the best gauntlets I've seen. That's up here. Um, yeah, that's probably here. It's a plus three magic item. That's really good. Tomb of Ostrovaris. Fantastic adventure. I've reviewed it like twice. I reviewed it the physical form, I think, and I reviewed it in a video. Um, and now I'm kind of reviewing it again. It's it's a really good one. Uh, is it my favorite adventure of all time? No, but it's really good. And it's a great gauntlet. Because it's it's got that tone of, like, hey, here's a huge dungeon. It's a big dungeon. And uh, you're just getting fed in. It's like Indiana Jones, right? Where, uh, the third one where they're just sending those guys in to try to, you know, trigger all the traps and just try to get through. It's like that. You're, you're caught. There's a bunch of you, as many as the DM wants, as many as you want, and just, hey, we're going to keep sending people in, they're going to keep dying until you get further and further, and eventually we're going to get through the dungeon. You're going to find the item you need to find. That's great. Yeah, two of Ostrovars. Really good. Right, the next is the Alchemist's Laboratory. I think that's some loose copper pieces. It's another gauntlet. No, it's probably a bag of silver. I think it's at the bottom. It's, it's, I think it's like here. Um, it's got some good ideas. It's got some interconnectivity, which I really liked. But again, if you're talking about competition, if I'm going to run a, a Shadow Dark Gauntlet, I'm going to run two of Ostroparis. Or I'm going to run Castles and Tillin. Um, it's free. It's pay what you want. So that that's really, you know, a lot of people are going to want that. Um, the city that is, was, and will be, or, or something like that. Yeah, that's what the next one is. That's a really good one. The ideas are awesome. That's going in here, plus your magic item. That's a good one. Oh, that's, those, that's really good. I really like that time mechanic. Going into the city, doing things there, and then going into the future when the city is destroyed and looting. <laughs> it would be really funny to, like... Right, you, you, you buy something from a merchant, he takes your money, puts it in a safe, and then you jump into the future and go back to the, the magic shop or the item shop where it was and break open the safe and get your money back <laughs> in the future. You can still like that. It's got a lot of really cool uh, possibilities for what you could do in that time jumping back and forth. It, it would be hard to play because you'd have to be really consistent and you'd have to figure out how to run it. But if you could do that, it'd be a really fun adventure and it would be super memorable. Yeah. That's going there. All right, Trial of the Slime Lord. This is another good one. A uh, pile of golden gems, but I think it's upper level. I think it's somewhere up here. I'm, I'm, I'm swapping those. <laughs> now that I look at them, I'm swapping them. But I think it goes there. It's it's right up here. It's good. Trial of the Slime Lord. I love how you go through those different wings, and you're doing those different tricks and traps, and there are other ways out. I remember thinking the one change I would have made is I would have put this in the sewers under a city as opposed to in the wilderness somewhere. And I think if you make that one change, the adventure's awesome. So I'm putting it there, a pile of golden gems. I'd run that on its own. I'd actually run that as the beginning of a campaign. I was I was actually very tempted to. This last campaign that I started, I considered running it starting there and saying, okay, you get dropped into a tomb or dropped into a, a trial, right? You, you've, been kid, you've been kidnapped by members of a cult and you've been thrown down. What do you do? And that's where we start the campaign. I didn't end up going with that, but I think you could do a really fun one that way. All right, um, Cave of the Slumbering Something. That one's kind of cool. It's got a neat gimmick where you play part of a session and everything's going really well for the players. And then as soon as they start to notice that you're not rolling and things are just things are just going well, then you ask them to start rolling and they can start waking up and they realize they're actually in this cave being slowly transformed and it's all been a nice dream that's imposed on them. That's kind of cool. But once you get through that, the dungeon itself is really, really simple. 
can just go right to the end. I think it's a pile of golden gems, but I put it at the bottom there. So somewhere around here. The same with the next one. This is the Storm Barrow, where pirates are bringing back, I think, body parts for a necromancer who's chosen this barrow because lightning is always always strikes it. It's guaranteed because it was cursed or blessed. I forget. I don't know if it's a blessing or a curse, but it's always there. Um, yeah. Yeah, so I, I think this is a good one. It's another one that I would put into a region. It's probably like here. A bag of silver. It's good. But it's like a, a good it's a good supplement. The reptile house. That's an interesting one. I remember liking a lot about it. I don't like necessarily I remember there was that really long narrative section at the beginning where you just kinda had to go along with it. Not everyone's gonna like that. I didn't mind it so much. I thought it was good writing. But it's not for everyone's tastes. I think I'm going to put it at the upper end of Bag of Silver. I remember I liked it, but that that really railroady beginning is not how I mostly play. Even with new players, I tend not to railroad because you think, well, you can get away with it with new players because they're new and they don't really know what they're supposed to be doing. But that's the whole point, at least in my mind. Like the fact that they're new and they don't know what they're doing means you need to model the kind of D&D you want to play with them early. Right? So new players, I always give them choices. Especially at the beginning, I don't, I don't try not to railroad or say, "Hey, you guys are just." If I'm gonna, if I, if they're gonna do a dungeon crawl from doing a one shot, you just start off right there, and you say, "Hey, you're at the dungeon." I don't role play out, requiring them to answer a certain way. All the scenes leading them up to that point. If they're there, I tell them that they have agreed and they're there. I think that's probably, probably good here too. All right, we're getting closer. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Okay, so we're we're still we still got a ways, <laughs> but hey, we we got this. We got this. Tier lists. Okay. The next is uh, Source of Victories, Tomb of the Dust Queen, Tomb of the Dust Queen. Great low level adventure. I think this is a probably lower level of well, upper level of silver, bag of silver. I think it's got a, it, yeah. yeah. I think it's upper level of silver because it's it's a good dungeon to run into. Good introductory dungeon. I don't think I would, especially the players who know D&D at all, I don't think I'd run it. But I think it's a good introductory one. Right, the Forest of Doors. Ooh, that's a hard adventure to even rate because it's not really an adventure but i think it's good i think it's a plus three magic item um but it's not really an adventure it's more of an idea forest of doors but it's a good idea it's a really good idea it's technically an adventure i think he calls it that or the, the creator calls it that on drive through rpg yeah okay that's how i put it all right the jaguar queen great one that is a plus three magic item. I love the Jaguar Queen. Um, a lot of cool ideas in that one. I'm going to put this up. Well, I'll rearrange. Because I think this is going higher than Falkar Stabby. This is going higher than these. This is right around here. Yeah, that's right around there. I'm going to rearrange these because this, I think, goes lower. I think, it, I think it's going to go like that. But anyway, I'll figure it out. Um, yeah, Source of Victory's Dungeons are great examples of Shadow Dark Dungeons. Kind of how you should design. It's like the it's like the gold standard, and I think that one is the gold standard. It's well, no, the next one coming up is I think slightly better, but it's a very closely slightly better. The other source of victory one. I'll do it right now. Actually, it's the uh, tomb of the worm witch or whatever that is, the curse of the worm witch. It's it's just very slightly better than it, but they're both very good. Again, basically the gold standards uh, in my opinion of, of how to design for shadow dark dungeons. Not that my own adventure was anything like them. Um, but, uh, but I, I reached out to Sursa uh, when I designed uh, The Blessed of the Beast and uh, asked for his advice. And he gave it. It was really good, really helpful advice. I didn't follow all of it, <laughs> but I did follow a lot of it. And I think it made the adventure much better. All right, Tower of the Spectral Sorceress. This is a great one. Um, Watcher DM, I think, makes this. Watcher DM or something like that. 
Tower of the Spectre Sorceress. This is definitely one that I would put into a world um, rather than make it the, the only thing I would do in a one-shot. It's probably the low end, upper end of a bag of silver. I think it's up there. Yeah, it's got to be up there. Uh, the Cursed Library of Grothel. That's next. Same thing, bag of silver. I think this is a good place. It's a good one to put in to an adventure, to a... To a a region or a, a hex crawl or west marches. Actually, the same for the next one, which is the uh, uh, something of chaos, the cavern of chaos, or the cairn of chaos. It's the cairn of chaos. Yeah, that's the same thing. I put it up there. I think it's slightly better than the cursed library of Gothel. It's good. Uh, the next is the undying city or the unfallen city. Undying city. It's the one where the dragons have taken over. The dragon army has taken over the city and you have to delete the resistance. That's a plus three magic item. I remember hearing that it didn't do very terribly well or it did okay in the in a game jam. That it was, it was um, and I've always felt that it should, it should have been higher. The idea is so good. I, I, I looked at a lot of the other entries from that game jam and I didn't think they were as good. A lot of the ones that did better. I think this one's really, really good. It's a plus three magic item. The ideas alone are great. The, the, in fighting the monsters, the the possibility, the, the possible quests that you have, all really good. Uh, Frostmire and the Baron of Languish. It's not as good as the other Frostmire one, I have to say. I'd put it in a bag of silver rather than a pile of golden gems. It's it's somewhere around here, I think. Yeah, it's somewhere around there. It's good though. Um, the Fey, I think, could have been a little bit more pronounced. They're a little bit kind of generic fae. Trickster fairies and, you know, force gnomes. Um, I think it was made on a deadline. I think that's, I think, I think the creator commented on one of the videos that I reviewed, or the video I reviewed it and mentioned that it was on a deadline and, or something like that, that there was more that he meant to add or something like that. But it, it's good. Um, the Slumbering City. <laughs> this is probably the one I've been harshest on. In my review of it, I remember people, a lot of people defended it and were like, hey, I think you're being too harsh. I stand by what I said in, in a lot of ways. I think I think probably I came across too harshly. And then my criticism, I still st I still hold that criticism. But I think that the actual mechanic of destroying gold, taking away gold, taking away magic items from your players is, is anti-fun. I think I still support that. I think I still defend that. And I uh, also, I think that for a pay product, which this is a pay product, you need to make sure that your labeling is right. And calling it a city is misleading, because it's not a city. It's a it's a large palace, basically. With some, you know, outbuildings, essentially. It's like, you know, 30 or 40 buildings. It's like a Legend of Zelda uh, city. Like, you know, Breath of the Wild city, which isn't a real city. It's just like a video game city. And, um, and so I think that those two problems really took it down. But, all of that being said... It's a really good adventure. And the tone of it is exactly Sword and Sorcery. I'm putting this in an upper end of Pile of Golden Gems. I think it's I think it's at least here. Maybe higher, but I think it's it's really good. Temple of the Smoking Eye. Really good location. Not enough there to make it a one shot that I would like just play. It's a it's a it's a place by the road. Actually, the other one, the Rotting Gardens of Reflessia, I'm going to put next to it because it's the same thing. They're both really good locations that aren't probably enough on their own for a full adventure. They're great locations, by the way. I think the Temple of the Smoking Eye is bigger and more f fleshed out than the Rotting Gardens of Reflessia, but I think they're both in that same category. All right, the next one here is, oh, the Painter's yeah, the Cursed Manor, the Painter's Manor. This is, I I think it's loose copper pieces. I used to think it was better. When I first reviewed it, I was much keener on it. But I think it has one good idea, and that's the paintbrush. The rest of it is very generic. The rest of it is just like a few rooms and a few fights. And really, you could just generate them very easily. But the, the, the paintbrush that draws the paint from the blood of the wielder, and you can't use it on a paint, and when you draw with paint with it, it reveals secrets. That's cool. So I'm going to put that on the upper end of loose copper pieces, but I think that's where it really should go. Uh, the Devil's Mill Hopper, I think, is this next one. I reviewed that a while back. Same thing. Um, 
Pile of golden gems? Yeah, it's probably somewhere in here. I think it's higher. I think this is higher. I think it's right around here. Yeah, it's probably right there for me. Um, Devil's Millhopper. Um, Evil Mining Corporation. Um, turned a local rumor myth accidentally into a reality. What I really like about it is the map connects underneath everything. And so you can connect the well and the village connects to the final dungeon. You just have to go far enough underground. That's cool. That's really cool. Um, Crystal Mine. This one's really good. It's too small. Again, it's too small to be kind of anything on its own, just as a full-on adventure, but it's definitely like the other others' adventures here. Uh, I think. I'm being too hard on that. I think this is probably better. <laughs> um, I'll have to rearrange these two, because I think I've, I've let a lot of these slip down, and now that I'm looking at them, I think I should rearrange them. But um, but for now, I think it's, it's, it's right in there. The plus three magic item... Plus three sword right away is not right. I remember that. You'd want to change that. I'd want to change that if I were to mine. But otherwise, it's a good adventure. All right, the next one is... Maybe this is the Cursed Library of Griffel. No, the Unearned Halls. I think this is the Unearned Halls. Um, I think it's exactly in that same category as the Cursed Library of Griffel. Solid, but I wouldn't put it as as in competition with other adventures. I don't think I'd run it. Bound for the Bogwood. This is a pile of golden gems or a plus three magic item. And th I think it's a plus three magic item. I think once it's finished, it's going to be fantastic. I love it. <laughs> a lot of it is the vibe. I have to admit, the art and the vibe, the whole thing, I like a lot. But this is one that I would recommend people play on its own. You'd get a few sessions out of it. In fact, this is one that I want to run once it's finished, if it's, if it's ever finished. This is one that I want to run on its own. I think this goes... Probably higher than this. Probably somewhere around Nightmare Over Ragged Hollow. I think it's right up there. And the same thing with the, the Sword for the Forest. The sword, for the, sword of the Forest? Sword for the Forest? Same thing. And actually, I'm going to put the next one. Three Goblin Markets. I put all three of these together in my mind. Um, they're all very good adventures. And I think all three deserve to be run on their own. I think Three Goblin Markets is the best of the three. I think Bound for the Bogwood is the second best of the three. But I put these four, actually... Three Goblin Markets, Bound for the Bogwood, A Sword for the Forest, and Nightmare of a Ragged Hollow. I put them all in the same category in my mind. I just realized that. And that category is very good. Very good location-based adventure. Um, interestingly, I think three of them were designed for the same game jam. A, uh, a forest, a town, and a dungeon, or a town, a forest, and a dungeon, I think, for Cairn. All three very good. Highly recommend you guys check them out. Uh, Ruin of the Immortal Warlord. Uh... Yeah, it's a bag of silver, I guess. It's a good location. Throw it into a world. Very small. I like the map. That's kind of why I reviewed it in the first place. I remember that. I liked the map, and I thought it was really good. But it's it's very small. Yeah, it's... It's probably here. Uh, under the meter mishap. It's probably right there. Yeah. Okay, uh, next one is... The Dark Contracts. Or something like that. This one's by PhD, D, yeah, PhD20, PhD and D. Um, I used to follow him all the time on YouTube. This was back in the day, before I, wait, years ago, before I did my channel. Um, Matt Click from A Fistful of Dice, PhD20, Dungeon Master Johnny over, uh, he's kind of now, um, I forget what his channel is. He kind of changes the channel's name a couple times. He might be Dungeon Master Johnny again. Um, Samwise7RPG. Um, Outsiders 68. Uh, that was the Dawn Forge cast days. I don't know if any of you guys remember Dawn Forge cast. Man, uh, I'm nostalgic uh, from that for that period of YouTube P and D videos. I loved that period. It was before. It was right, right around the time of the D and D Next playtest. D and D Five E was just about to come out. That's when I started getting onto the YouTube D and D sphere. I played, I've been playing D and D for ages, but that was when I first started to get into that. And so that, those, were the, those were the channels that I followed. Mostly they're all gone now. Mostly they're, they don't do much on YouTube anymore. Yeah, it's too bad. There are a few, there are a few people that still do. But the channels have mostly turned changed. D&D &D channels have changed <laughs> since then. Now the Dark Contracts is a good idea. 
it's not something I would run as a location in a bigger adventure because it's very tonally specific. I like it. I'm going to put it at the lower end, though, of a pile of golden gems. I think it's not as good as these others. But I would, I would, if someone said, hey, you're going to run this tonight, I would, I'd be excited. Yeah, I'd be down to run it on its own as a one shot. I don't think I would do so in comparison to these others, but I would do so more than everything in the bag of silver category. So I think that's, I think that's the right place for it, the bottom of a pile of golden gems. Um, Savage something. Savage Cave, Savage Fen. This is a really good location. But it kind of, I, I, I think even when I reviewed it, I said it's a really good part of a bigger thing. So I'm going to put it there. It falls into the same category as these in my mind. Yeah, it's there. What's this next one? Uh, what is this next one? I can't make that out. Mm, looking over here at my other bigger pictures. Um, it's not showing up on them. What is that? Oh, that's the Forgotten Halls of Brass Fire. Hmm. I think I gotta put that on the low end of Bag of Silver. Maybe that's some loose copper pieces. No, it's down here. It's 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 like right around here. Yeah. It's it's just a little generic, a little boring. It's got a couple really good ideas though. And again, if you want to throw this in as a location in one of your worlds, I think that would be great. You could you could make it more interesting by connecting it to other locations and to a bigger story. I think that's I think that's what I would say. And uh, put it down there. Uh, Grimhill Fort. That's a good location. I put it somewhere in here. Yeah, it's probably like, it's probably like there. There's a couple really cool aspects of it. I like how you can really approach it from any any direction. There's a couple really, and the map is cool. The map is really cool. Um, and there's some good NPC interaction. Yeah, I think it's a good location right there. The pits of Vrund. This is a pile of golden gems. I tend to be a little bit harsher on Menagerie pressed products. I realize that. I'm not sure exactly why. They don't. They don't. I don't like them all that much. And I think the reason I don't like them all that much is because they approach dungeon crawling in a very interesting or a very. I think yeah. It, it, they go for quantity, quantity of dungeon rather than quality of dungeon. The dungeons are. They're good. I think I think some people could I think a lot of people love them. I'm probably sounding very snooty right now. But I don't care. <laughs> I mean I kinda do. I don't want to sound snooty. It's definitely a pile of golden gems. I think it's probably here somewhere. Yeah. That seems like a good place for it. Kind of in the middle of a pile of golden gems. I think that's that's where it's gonna end up. Yeah. Um, this is something like the circle, or three circles, or two circles, or something like that. The next one is Karen. Uh, it's interesting. It's like the same sort of thing as a Dark Contracts, in that it's got an interesting vibe, it's unique enough, and yeah, it's unique enough that I'd want to try it. But it's not high on my list of things to try. There are other things that I would rather try first. But it's it's tonally specific enough that I don't think it's yeah pile of golden gems. It's a good place for it. Rise of the Blood Olds. Yokai Gall, I think, made this. I assume that's how you say his name. I actually never. I don't really know. That's how I that's how I read it phonetically, but I don't know. Um. Rise of the Blood Olds. It's like here. No, there's some cool... It's it's higher. It's like here. There's some cool elements to it. I really like the interaction with the NPCs. Yeah. And it's very, very open. That's good. Exton. Ooh, Exton. I like Exton a lot. 
I'm going to say Exton is... It's a plus three magic item. It deserves to be better known than it is. It's probably, like, right there. It's really good. Exton is a... Basically a completely statless West Marches. <laughs> I think that's how it's even... Um, I think that's even how it's laid out. Statless West Marches. Uh, something of Storms. Cairn of Storms. Hmm, I forget what this one's called. It's, it's not, it's, it's fine. It's totally fine. I just remember not being terribly compelling. I like the map. I included it in one of my eight video reviews because I like the map. I remember that. But I thought the adventure itself was a little bit dull. There's just not a lot going on. It's a, it's a good location. It's like here. Yeah. Oops. Wrong one. Yeah, it's like here. Something like that. I think that's what it is. Uh, Troll in the Woods. It's got a couple funny jokes. <laughs> uh, it's it's like this. No, I think I'm being... It's like it's down here. <laughs> I realize. Uh, no. No, it, no it, it has that funny joke, and the dungeon's pretty good, and the connections between the village and the troll itself are also pretty good. I think it could have been more expanded, but I like it. I think it's probably like here. It's got some value. No, I'm I'm being way too, way too. Uh, yeah, it has like a couple funny things. Yeah, I'm just putting it in the wrong category. I think if I were if I had, if I were reviewing it an hour ago, <laughs> when I first started this video, I think I would have immediately put it down in the bag of silver. But because I've been here for a while, I'm like, oh, yeah. I'm a little bit tired. <laughs> it's late. But I'm going to finish. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to try to finish this. Maybe it's a two-hour video. It'll take a while to upload. I'm going to do it anyway. If anyone watches all of this, you guys have to give me a comment. In the, I, I, ugh, I shouldn't have said that. I never ask people to comment. I said I would never do it. I just did. Oops. Don't comment. <laughs> Wands of the Whippoorwill Wood. I like that a lot. Wands of the Whippoorwill Wood. It's fairy tale. It's beautiful. It's great use of public domain art. I remember that. And the wands themselves are interesting. There's cl clever clues about where they go. I don't think it's as good as the plus three magic item stuff, though. I think it's like here. And it's better than Kazakh Moor. I like it more than Kazakh Moor. I'm not sure if it's better, but I like it more. I'm going to it there. Uh, Blue Hole, the Necropolis of Nuremen. I remember that. I have such good feelings about this adventure. It just, it feels like... I think I said this in my review. It feels like... Role-playing games felt to me when I listened at the door while my brother and his friends played D&D when I was too young to play. That's what it feels like. It feels like me it feels like the adventures that I overheard at the door and when I looked at my brother's maps for Merp they looked like the maps from the, from Nuremen I think I'm going to put in a pile of gold and gems it's like in my mind it's like here it's probably objectively no I think it's objectively very good the writing was good. It was a little bit dense, but that's the style it's going for. Yeah. Right, Black Apple Brew. This is a plus three. I love Black Apple Brew. Oops. Hey, what are you doing? Get up there. Uh, Black Apple Brew. This is probably better than... It's probably here. The Black Apple Brew was hilarious. There were so many good ideas. The Illusion... I think that's, yeah, that's this one. The illusion uh, in the Fae Place where everything looks like nobles and everything looks great. And then you, everything looks you know, fantastic. And then you realize what actually everything looks like. And it's actually horrible. And some of the players might realize that and some of them might not. I think that's great. Yeah, that's a plus three magic item, Black Apple Brew. That's, that's well worth playing. 
Palace of the Silver Princess remake. Hmm. That's an interesting one because it has has a lot of work to do. In its current state, I wouldn't play it, but it's definitely a pile of golden gems. It's definitely valuable. I would say it's like here. Yeah, I think that's exactly right. That's where I put it in my mind. In its current state, I think if it were finished, I think it would be a plus three magic item. I don't think it would fall into a legendary artifact or a dragon sword. But I think it would be a plus three magic item if it were finished. I really like that map. I just there, there just needs to be editing. It just needs to get cleared up. It was it wasn't done. Yeah, that's very clearly it wasn't done. Uh, twice crowned king. Uh, pits of Bruin. I put it, I put it right there in my mind with the pits of Bruin. Twice crowned king. No, yeah, a little higher. I like it. I think it's good. But it's the same. It's uh, yes, yeah, same category in my head. Same kind of dungeon crawling. I prefer a little bit more whimsy in my dungeons, weirdness, than either the Pits of Bruned or Twice Crown King dungeons. There is more in the Twice Crown King. No, that goes there. Yeah, yeah, that's there. Um, okay, we got some mega dungeons, or at least we got one mega dungeon, Dwero Deep. I have mined, <laughs> no pun intended, I've mined the heck out of Dwero Deep. I take tons of stuff from it, but I would never run it. It's not loose copper pieces, because it's good. It's just I would never run it as is. But I would take from it. I have run the other Mega Dungeons by Great Gillespie, straight up. Barrow Maze, Archaea, and Haifel. But I would never run this one. It's too dense. A little too generic. If I'm going to play a Dwarven Mine now, I'm going to use Moria. The One Ring version. That's a good one. Um, it's a bag of silver. I'm going to put it... Mm, it's so hard to say because it's just in a different category entirely. It's like it's almost not worth putting on here in anywhere, in any category. No, it's a pile of golden gems. What am I talking about? I've taken so much from it. It's like it's got to be at least here. At least. It's probably higher. But, but actually, I think that's probably fair. I think the other ones are going to be higher. I put the other Mega Dungeons on here, too. But I think that's where I'm going to put that one. Wonky Willies, Interactive Extravaganza, Fun for the Whole Family, whatever that one adventure is called. Hilarious. Very tonally specific. Not something I want to run all the time, but really, really good. This is like here. Yeah, that's like there. That's good. That's a good adventure. Solid. Very funny. Um, Once Upon a Giant. Initially, I was, I was more keen on this adventure. Since going back to it, I'm way less keen on it. It's not the sort of thing... Yeah. I think I'm, I think I'm going to put it in loose copper pieces. Not because it's bad, but because the overall executions didn't actually stick with me. I think it could have been a lot better. I don't think I would ever run it, and I don't think I would ever include it in the West Marches. Yeah. Yeah. It's too bad, because I think there's a lot of... I, 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 yeah. I could be convinced to put it higher, but I think I'm going to put it there. It's getting late, and I don't want to do too, too much more of this re reorganizing. But I could be convinced to put it higher. Falling Skies. Really interesting one. I think this goes up here. It's an ICRPG adventure, which is pretty rare. I don't have a lot of ICRPG adventures. I have a couple. Uh, this is the only one that I've reviewed on the channel. And it's really interesting the way that it plays out. Where you get these scenes and these descriptions and, like, what's going on and questions for you to ask. And they're questions that kind of, like, set up the actual conflict in each scene. It's really cool. I like that. I'd like to see more done that way. I think that's where it goes. Lair of the Bog Lich. Great little regional adventure. Again, not something I think you would ever use as the only part of a campaign as a one-shot adventure. 
but part of something bigger, I think it would be good. I think it's like here. Yeah, it's like I think it's I think it's like there. It's good. Curse of the Ganshogger. That's a plus three. Uh, I think it goes up here. Oops. I think it goes up here. Maybe higher than effort reflections. Yeah, it's like there. Curse of the Ganshogger is awesome. Really engaging. Great ideas. Really, really fun. And I remember the. Uh, I mean, the fact that it's, you know, geese and ducks and <laughs> um, swans, you can ignore. It'd be hard, but you could ignore it. You could change it up. But I'd say run it. Run it as is, or run it for Dragon Bane. And then you have duck people <laughs> built in. You have the mallards. All right. Um, let's see. This is one of the advanced adventures... Uh, this is one of the Shadowvane ones. I think this is the third one. Third Shadowvane adventure. The whole sequence is good. As a whole, I'm going to put... As a whole, I'm going to put it up under plus three magic item because I think it's really good. Where are the other two? Yeah, here's the... Oops. Here's the second. And where's the first? It's the Mushroom People. I think this is it. Yeah, that's it. I think as a whole, those three go into plus three magic items. Individually, I don't think I'd run them. But if I were to say, hey, guys, we're going to run a, a Shadow Dark camp or an Underdark campaign for the next three months, we're going to play every once a week, you know, four hours. You get through all three. I think that would be really cool to go through the Shadow Vein. So I'm going to put those in a plus three magic item. That's something that I would like to do someday. <laughs> I think that would be fun. All right, let's see. The. Lily in the Garden with a Lost Dare to Tread. That's a Mouse Ritter adventure. Um, I like that one. Where am I putting it? It's very short. But I would play it as a one-shot. It's pretty. Especially for Mouse Ritter. I could put it... Uh, well, as a hex part. Well, yeah, it's, it would be a good hex in Mouse Ritter. I want to put it like here. I really like the formatting of the adventure. I like how pretty it is. Um, you guys know what this one is. The Halls of Ardenvol, or Vool. It's a dragon sword. What are we talking about? It's a dragon sword. Not because I would guarantee that you have to run it. It's it's not, it's barely an adventure, right? I mean, it's barely a mega dungeon. It's it's like a lifestyle. <laughs> uh, but the Halls of Ardenvol, it's got to be a dragon sword. It's just there's no other way. It's it's almost in its own category, right? I mean, it's just its own thing. But if I'm going to put it anywhere, I have to put it in a dragon sword. So, that's where I'm putting it. Uh, the Witch's Scream, the Banshee's Scream, Scream of the Witch Queen or something like that. It's another advanced adventure. I think this one is probably Bag of Silver. It's got some good ideas, but it's on the lower end. It's fine. It's fine. Abe Knox. That's a plus three. Uh, plus three magic item. And it's not... Well, is it a legendary artifact? I think it's a legendary artifact. It's really good. Abe Nox is really good. The, uh, the tone is incredible. And it, it scratches that, like, Elden Ring itch of the collapsed dead civilization or the dying civilization you're just coming across the fiends of or something like that. Yeah, I'll be nice. Putting it there. I might move it around, but I like that a lot. Uh, Red Mausoleum. I think that's... I think that's some power pieces. I, I, I reviewed it, and I liked it, and then I re-read re it, and I had just no memory of anything in it. It was in one ear, out the other, in one eye, out the other. It was just... Um, it just slipped out of my head. Uh, I had no interest in it when I reviewed it again, or reread re -read it. Yeah, I think it goes in loose copper pieces. Not that it is bad. It fits a certain table's vibe very, very well. Um, I think some of these should go down into loose copper pieces, now that I look at them. I think I need to move these down. 
I think this would be fair. I think that's fair. Yeah. Uh, Barkeep on the Borderlands. This is good. This is a plus three magic item. I like Barkeep on the Borderlands a lot. I think it's hilarious. No, this is a legendary artifact. Barkeep on the Borderlands is one of those things where you need to play it at some point. It's not just something that I would want to play. It's something that I think everyone should play. It's really funny. Barkeep on the Borderlands. It, it probably goes higher. It probably goes up here. Above Well of Frogs. Uh, yeah, I think it went. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. I'll have to rearrange, but I think it's up there. Um, Parallel Dungeons. This is a great one. This is a plus three magic item. Parallel Dungeons is a great idea. I'm going to put it right there. It's a great place for it. Parallel Dungeons is three dungeons in one, and you can jump between them, and there's different things happening in them, different factions, different dangers, different monsters, but the room structure is the same. You can use that to your advantage. Such a good idea. That's a plus three magic item. Howler. Pile of Golden Gems. This is a good one. I think this is upper level. Uh, no, it's like there. Howler is really good. I like it. Um, there's a lot of good RP, uh, a lot of good role playing. There's a lot of good effects. It's funny. I like the art. I like the maps. Yeah, I'm a little lower. I think it's like here, but it's still good. It's still good. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's in the upper level of, of pile of golden gems. So it's a good. It's a good adventure. Um, Journey to the center of the Aerith. 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 That's a plus three. I like that one a lot. I just love anything that has to do with under the under the earth. I think it's like there. It's in the same mental category as the Comet of Time Forgot. It's pulpy, journeying down to the earth. It feels old school. Yeah, that's good. I like that a lot. Um, oh, this one, the Nightmare's Rain. This is the one of the adventures. I think I said this. This is the closest. An adventure has come to being, like, incredible and missing just a few things and therefore make, really bringing it down. I, when I reviewed it, I was like, this is just a, a hair's breadth away from being fantastic. Um, a couple changes need to be made, and I think this is really a fantastic adventure. As is, I'm inclined to put it in a bag of silver. But I think it's, it's, those changes would put it into a plus three magic item. I think that's the difference. It's in the upper levels of a bag of silver, so it's like here. And I think a few changes would put it up here. Somewhere probably around above Falkrest Abbey, around Willow. I think that's where it would go. If it just had a few more differences. If there was more interaction with the girl in the nightmare, I think that's great. If she's hiding in her own dream and you have to find her, oh man, that, that whole adventure would be so good. Um, and again, that's an easy change to make, but it's not in the adventure itself. So I think that's why I'm going to put it down in there. Uh, Doom of the Barrow of the Doomed Kings Doom of the something Kings that's a really good one it's like Beowulf I love Beowulf um, that's a plus three and I think it's right around here Doom of the Savage Kings that's what it's called Doom of the Savage Kings that's really good yeah that's going there I would say it's like Beowulf for me uh, again I love Beowulf um, Winter something? I forgot what this one's called. This is the Journey. This is a really unique one. I like that a lot. I'm going to put this up in a plus three as well. I think this goes... I think it goes like here. It's somewhere in there. Same category. I like that one a lot. The fact that you get these really different encounters, really different, you could run it many, many times, and each time it's going to be different. You can tailor the difficulty to your group and what it prefers. That's a really good one. Yeah, I think more people should do this one. Ice something? Man, I forget what that one's called. But it's great. That's a great one. Uh, the Lonesome Keep, that's barely an adventure. It's just a location. Uh, it's a it's a low bag of silver. It's like in here. Lonesome Keep. It's good. It's not. It's just a place. It's just, it really, there isn't any adventure there. <laughs> I included it because it's just like, I think I did a review on it. In one of the, you know, I, counted it as an, I counted it as an adventure. That's why I'm putting it on here. <laughs> Um, Hidden Gods of the Wood, of the Woods. That's an interesting one. I think that's like here. It's a one-page dungeon. I've reviewed it. It's totally specific and uh, kind of gruesome, but there's a lot of good ideas. Yeah, Hidden Gods of the Wood. We're getting close to the end, guys. An hour and forty, and we're getting close to the end. 
All right, the next one we have here is uh, the Lizard Folk one. Mm, it's like here. It's it's pretty generic. There are a couple things that I liked about it, um, but for the most part, I have to say it just wasn't my wasn't my favorite. Yeah, it was fine. It wasn't terribly memorable. Um, High fell. The Drifting Dungeon. Highfell is a plus three. I love I love it. I think it's really good. Not everyone's favorite, but it's up there for me with Bear Maze. I think Bear Maze and Highfell are my two favorites. Um, and I think Highfell is my favorite. Bear Maze, is, there's a lot to like about it, but I think I like it um, better. It's like here. Yeah. Highfell is really good. Plus three magic items, certainly. It's a solid one. Um, okay, let's see. I'm going to download this. I think I'll probably share this with you guys afterwards. Show me my tier list. Um, Forbidden, or the Lost Valley of Arcaea, the City of Arcaea. I, forget, I always forget what this one's called. This is um, higher than Duero Deep. At the very least, it's higher than Duero Deep. Where else is it? It's higher than Brund. Higher than... Uh, Blood Ohms. I'm trying to look and see where I stop comparing it to others. I think it's like here. Yeah. I think that's where I put it. The staff is really cool. You build the staff as you go through and explore and you find more and more. And there's so much. Again, Mega Dungeons are hard to categorize. It's basically not fair to put them with this because they're just a different category. But you can take them and, and separate them out from the rest if you want in your mind. But it, it, and just rank them one against the other. But this is how I would rank it. I would put it here. Between High Fell and, and uh, Duero, Duero Deep. And then I have Barrow Maze. And that's the same thing. I think I'm going to put Barrow Maze uh, just behind. No, I mean, sorry, no. Just above. No, Barrow Maze is higher. What am I talking about? Barrow Maze is a plus three. It's, it's like right there. Barrow Maze is... I've played that a lot. We played it. We had a lot of fun with Barrow Maze. I love the tombs on top. I, I don't even know what I'm thinking. I blame how late it is and how, how long I've been doing this video. An hour and 40. This is... this is Yeah, it's at least here. It's probably higher. It's... It's... It's here. Yeah. I've had so much fun with it. Okay. We'll put it there. I think that's a good place for it. Um, okay, we're on the last tier. We're on the last page. Uh, Return to the Keep on the Borderlands. Um, sorry, guys. That's the loose copper pieces for me. I just didn't like it very much. It's fine. I think the lady here is very, very attractive, which is funny because, I don't know. <laughs> but that's about it. <laughs> the lady on the cover. I was like, whoa, she's cute. Other than that, I'm not a huge fan of the adventure. Uh, yeah. Yep. So that's that. Um, this next one, though, is not one I've reviewed on the channel. It's one I, I ran through, or I adapted to one of my campaigns years before I, uh, years ago, basically. Um, and it's, um, oh, I forget what it's called now. Gosh. Um, I'm going to look that up really quick, uh, because it's going to drive me nuts if I don't tell you guys. It's um, a mountain. Uh, let's see... Beneath the something. Uh, let's see, what is it called? Second edition adventure. The Gates of Firestorm Peak. There it is. The Gates of Firestorm Peak. Yeah. I like that one a lot. I used it and ran through it. It's really cool. You guys should check it out if you've never never heard of the Gates of Firestorm Peak. Maybe I'll do a review of it at some point. I think of it as a plus three magic item. It's like right here. Yeah, it's really fun. Got these psychic shenanigans going on, mutations changing, lots of trolls. It's um, it's kind of on a timer. The gates shut after a certain amount of time. You get stuck inside. There's a lot of cool magic items. There's some uh, there's a, a market with a lot of different kinds of things like mind flayers and drow and durger all selling stuff. You can buy and you can mix in with the crowd and buy and sell stuff. Yeah, that's a good adventure. Let's check it out. Um, Sunless Citadel, third edition, 
one of the first adventures I ever played. I, I recognize that I'm entirely nostalgic for this. But in my mind, it's a plus three magic item. I'm going to put it there. It's my tier list. I'll put it at the bottom of plus three magic item. But I do I do love it. Some of the Citadel is one of my favorite adventures in that sense. Um, keep on the Shadowfell. Starter set, fourth edition adventure. I want to be harsh with this and put it in some loose copper pieces. I put the other one there. I'll put it there. Some people are going to really get mad. Or they did. I remember in that review of it, people were like, hey, 4th edition is so good. That was a great adventure. Or it could be great. You just had to modify some things. Or whatever it was. It's not my bag. That's just not my bag. But I recognize, again, everything in this category has value. I'm, you know, the name of the category is just kind of a tongue-in-cheek thing. Um, loose copper pieces have money. Or have value. <laughs> Uh, let's see, um, Vault of the Lunar King, it's a big mega dungeon, randomly generated mega dungeon, 365 rooms I think. Um, the sheer volume of stuff guarantees it's going to have some value. I'm going to put it here though, it's like my least favorite of the mega dungeons that I have on here. Yeah. Yep, that's a good place for it. Um, Oh, Gravestone of Decay. Yeah, Gravestone of Decay. This is the one where you're... Tr the adventure isn't all that interesting in my mind, but the end of it's really cool. I'm going to put it like here because I think it is... It's it's less useful as like a location or an adventure. I wouldn't really run it, but the item in it was really cool. This There's this thing, this tablet, this, this stone that if anything you write on it, decays, dies over the course of time. If it's a person, they die quickly. If it's a concept, it dies. Like if it's a nation or an empire, it dies slowly. And if it's a concept, it dies even more slowly. But it does. Like freedom or justice. You can lose them. And there's a, there's a way to erase it and set things right. But it's like a whole process. That's cool. All right. Now I have the three Dolmenwood adventures other than Winter's, uh, other than Winter's Daughter. Imelda's Song. It's the first one. I like Imelda's song a lot. I think it's... It, these are all in just the point five versions. I still like them a lot. I think this is a plus three magic item. It's probably on the lower end of it. It's probably like here. Yeah. But it's a really good one. Um, no, it's higher. I would say it's 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 like Nightmare Rag over Ragged Hollow level. Yeah, it's right in there. I want to run it. Once I get a Dolmenwood campaign, I think this is the... I'm going to start off. I'm going to run it for my, my nephews. Uh, my nieces and nephews. And um, I'm thinking I'm going to run Winter's Daughter first, and then we'll run Imelda's Song second in that. Well, it's like a follow-up adventure. Uh, the Fungus That Came to Blackswell. It's a little less interesting to me. It's good. But it's like here. No. It's like here. Yeah, it's like exactly there. It's right next to the Scry the Stingbat and the Hole in the Oak. I think that's where it deserves to go for me. Um, the Ruined Abbey of St. Clude. This one goes higher. I like it now. I didn't like it before. I was I was, I was was less interested in it before they made the changes for the newest edition. I think it's probably like Parallel Dungeons level for me. Probably like right there. Yeah. I'll put it there for now. I might come back through and do a sweep and rearrange some things. Stealing the Soul. It's hard to say that this is even an adventure. This is a solo game. But I like it. And the same thing with the next one. Uh, the details of our escape. I included it because it's sort of like a game, it's sort of like an adventure, but um, I think I will put them both here-ish. Yeah, I think it's probably a good place for them. Because they're still a little bit, it's just hard for it to... Yeah, hard. Tomb of, a thousand, Tomb of a Thousand Doors, that's Mouse Ritter. It's not yet finished. I haven't reviewed it, but the final formatting isn't done, but the adventure is complete, or at least the, the Mega Dungeon is complete in the form that, that we have, we, those of us who backed it. Um, I'm going to put this, it's it's better than Vault of the Lunar King. I think it's like here. So far. I think if I were to have the final version of it, it would be a lot higher. But the formatting of it really is off-putting to me right now, because it's so different. Each section is so different, because each, each contributing author did it in their own style. So, that's where I put it. And then last but not least, we have Shadow over Gloomshire, like Shadow over Gloomshire, something like that. Um, that's a cool adventure for Dragonbane. It's like here. 
yeah, it's like there. It's got some cool gothic horror elements. And it's just interesting to see a Van Helsing mallard. <laughs> All right, well, that is the tier list of every adventure that I've reviewed on my channel. We have the top down. I'm really going to, I'm going to rearrange the top three. I don't know if I'm going to rearrange, well, maybe we'll see. It's, I have 10 minutes. I'll give myself 10 minutes to rearrange, and then I'll be done. Okay, favorite adventure. In the Dragon Sword category, it's got to be, it's got to be Waking Up Willoughby Hall. Yeah, I think it's my favorite adventure. I think, actually, Dragon Sword's done. That's how I would do it. I like Castles in Tillin better than the other two. And I think it's not fair to put the Halls of Ardenvul in any category. I have to put it in Dragon's Horde because it's the only thing that's just to it. But it isn't comparable to the other three. It's just in a different it's just it's a different it's a different product. So I'm gonna I'm gonna put it at the bottom of Dragon Sword. Yeah. Okay. That's that one. Uh, legendary artifact. This is gonna be a bit more changing around. Um is it? Winter's Daughter is, I think, my favorite. Followed by Incandescent Grottoes. I think this is where I could do some, some rearranging. I think Well of Frogs could move up. Yeah. In fact, I think that's fair. And this is where I'm going to move. I'm going to move this above that. I now look at them and I see that that's, that's better. Uh, Curse of the Black... Curse of the Black Rock. I always forget the name of it. Um, Secret of the Black Crag. That's what it is. Secret of the Black Crag. Um, that's really good. I'm, I'm talking myself into moving it even higher. Yeah. I'm going to stop it there, though. That's as far as it goes. But it's really good. That's that's as far as it goes. Um, and, I, and then otherwise, I think this is complete. I think Legendary Artifact tier is good. And I think that's the right ranking. Yeah. Okay, cool. That one's done. So I think I have my top ten. It's going to be one, two, three, four. Well, I think in my top ten adventures, I'm going to leave off Arden Bull. And I might even leave off this one, too, because they're not really adventure. I might even leave off Castles and Tillin. I don't think those of those as adventures. I think of them as, like, settings, dungeons, campaigns, mega dungeons. So I think what I'll do is I'll probably, for my top ten videos, top ten video, I'll do one, two, three, Four, five, six, seven, uh, eight, nine, ten. Yeah. Yeah, eight, nine, ten. Well, no, because I'm going to rearrange this. I'm rearranging this. Okay, so for now. But that, I think that this will all work. And I'll leave off settings, dungeons, and uh, settings, mega dungeons, and campaigns. All right. Let's start here. Of these two, which is better? Holy Mountain Shaker. Of these two, which is better? Hounds of Hendenburg. Of these two, which is better? Chamberlain's Chessboard. Of these two, which is better? Oh, that's tough. That's tough. They're, they're right there. I'm going to leave them right there. Yeah, I'm going to leave them right there. Black Apple Brew. Curse of the Ganshogger. This is fair. I could see these two swapping places. No, no, I think that's fair. That's good. Um, these three, these four, this goes here. That, that's better than that one. Aberrant Reflections. Mm, yeah, that's good. This is all good right here. All right, down here. This is better than that, and this is better than that. Um, but I think this is fair. Doom of the Savage Kings comes up, though. I like it better than these three. Same thing with these two. I think Source of Victory. Oops. These adventures deserve to be higher. And now that I say that, I think these all deserve to be higher, too. No. They're different categories. Again, Barrow Maze is just kind of its own thing. I almost shouldn't have put the Mega Dungeons on here, because they throw it off. But I think Falkrest Abbey has to go. Not entirely, just it has to go down here. It's just not as good. I have good memories of it, because I played it. It's not as good of an adventure as these. I think the same thing is true for this. I have a good association with it. I think it's a really good idea. It's just not as good. Yeah, 
Okay, it's in the same category. It's it's just, it's got to go down below this whole sequence of Nightmare of Ragged Hollow, Imelda's Song, Sword in the Forest, Kurt, Bound for the Bogwood, Three Goblin Markets, Barrow Maze, Willow, uh, Jaguar Princess, oops, Worm Witch, Doom of the Savage Kings, Comet of the Time for God. Man, that was, that's just... That's just one hit after the other. Holy cow. That's so good. If you guys want a bunch of adventures, right there, that sequence. <laughs> just play that, and you will have a great few months of gaming. Holy cow. That's a great sequence right there. Basically, everything I would say in these top three categories, if you get them, you're going to have a good time. You're going to have a great time. Not just a good time. You're going to have a great time. Yeah, man. These are great <laughs> adventures. Okay, let's see. Going on from there. Um, Falkrest Abbey is better, I think, than the Chimera. But the um, Shadow of the Chimera. That's a good one. Um, Extant, fun. Very small. It's a different category, than really. But it's it's good. Forest of Doors is the weird weird one here. I don't know why that's here. I mean, I know why I put it there. It's just it's not really an adventure. I shouldn't even have included it in the tier list, but I'll leave it. Um... The Unbroken City. That's what it's called. Not Undying. Unbroken City. Uh, Parallel Dungeons. Gates of Firestorm Peak. Shadow Vane Trilogy. And some of Citadel. I recognize that this is nostalgia. But again, it's my tier list. I can, I can do what I want. I'm putting it there. All right. Then this this whole mess of adventures. Okay. Um, Shadow of Tower. Yeah. This is the first. This is the best. And I think this is right to be second. This is good to be third, fourth, fifth. Yeah. These, this is a good sequence. I think this is actually good. Let's, I'm trying to think if anything stands out as bad. This is probably, this, this should be higher. This got, this got, yeah, this, this slipped down slowly but surely, and it ought to be higher. I think it ought to be up here. Yeah, it should be there. Yep, that's a better place for it. It's more, more suiting, more fitting. Um, this probably should be higher, too. This should probably be here. Here. Yeah. That's a good... That's good. That's good. That's good. Um, Doom of the Savage Kings. Oh, no, sorry. This is uh, Sailors on the Starless Sea. That's probably good there. Um, yep. Yep, yep, yep. This is all looking good. Barrow the Bone Blaggers. Why would I put this so low? I think it has more... Better qualities than I'm giving it credit for. I'm going to move this. I'm going to move it up here past these Mega Dungeons. Here. No. No, no, no. What am I doing? It's got to be higher than that. It's got, it's got a bunch of skeletons that are trying to eat and drink. It's got a necromancer who's been forced to bring them back. It's got a pixie who's, who's really angry about getting buried under a bunch of loot. Uh, or a bunch of... A bunch of um, uh, it's got an evil tree ant. Yeah, this is a good adventure. This is this is going up here. This is past cause of more. Okay, I talked myself into it. It's going right there. One more. One more shift. There we go. That's where it is. Barrow the Bone Blackers. Alright, the rest of it I think stays. Yeah, everything else stays. This is all good. Alright, down below. Bag of Silver. Um, this is one I think there could be a lot of debate about. Not that I think there will be in the comments or anything like that. But I think this is one the... The, the Blood Castle, or whatever it is. I think some people might put it higher. Um, but I think the rest seems pretty good. Yeah, yep, yep, yep. That all seems good. Yeah. And then down here, this Copper Pieces. Yep. All right. Hey, that's not so bad. I hope this has been interesting. Any of you guys who made it all the way into two hours, hey, more power to you, right? Um, I did it for two hours. I found it interesting, so maybe somebody else will. We'll see. <laughs> anyway, guys, I'm not going to try to push this past two hours. Um, this has been great. I, I think this is fun. And uh, as I'm coming up on a year in the channel, coming up on 3,000 subscribers, it's just a, I don't know, I wanted to do something like this, so... I hope it's been interesting. I hope you guys have had, uh, however long you've been subscribed to the channel or been watching my videos, I hope you keep up. I'm going to try to keep going, and uh, I'm, I've been having a great time. So that'll do it for this one. Uh, if you guys disagree with this tier list, I hope you make your own. Let me know if you do. All right.
well, I will let you all go because I'm very tired. <laughs> and I'll see you all in another video. Bye-bye.